I was kind of just planning on letting the Talbert files crumble away and fade into dust and obscurity, but when it came to Entom's response video, I took a lot of interest in the email section in particular. I wanted to look at things from a more objective, technical level. Was Entom's statement true that this really couldn't be faked or recreated in any way? Which really should be the takeaway of this video. This really isn't a response to a response on behalf of someone else, or even really a debunk video. It's more of a, hey, here's an educational tool on how you can make these kind of things and recreations, as well as just learning a bit about editing as well as misdirection. Because that is the point. For the sake of this video, we're looking into it from the perspective of, if Anton faked it, how do? And if you know anything about magic tricks, the first step to misdirection is setting up a criteria that this cannot be done a certain way, or something that you should look at to try and figure out how it's done. Let's take an example where a magician flies through the air. Your first thought is, oh, they used wires, and we just can't really see them. But then, if the magician did something to prove there were no wires, let's say going above their head or to their side, like flailing their arms around to show that there is no contact for wires to be there, then damn, I guess there are no wires. I don't know how they could do it without wires. In this case, the wires are the virtual machine. If our hypothetical Entom trying to misdirect us was claiming there is a virtual machine, there is no way to fake it, there would have to be a lot of confidence in that statement to directly challenge us if it was faked that way. Likewise, the moving background does mean that it likely wasn't spliced at all, which means whatever we have to do has to be done in one take effectively, and also can't be done in any way that would interfere with the virtual machine. Now, that doesn't mean you couldn't theoretically fake with the virtual machine, I just don't think that's worthwhile to look into for this topic. A, faking it through the virtual machine is way more difficult than the method I'm about to talk about, and B, like I said, why give us a clue to how it would be faked? And also that assumes Entom has the technical knowledge to fake it. So all right, step one to this whole process. Create a fake Scott Cawthon email. It literally does not matter what the actual Scott email says or is, as long as the name of the account is Scott Cawthon, and it has a profile picture that is close enough, it will work for this fake. Now have an email chain with your email of choice that goes back and forth and says whatever the hell you want. And learn how to use a virtual machine and get a moving background. I don't know, use Wallpaper Engine, that's what I did. Then, do everything as if it was all real. Open up the virtual machine, log into your email, check the email, hover over it even though it has the fake email shown, and do all of this recorded directly off your monitor with something like OBS or Streamlabs. Finish the recording, put it into basically any modern editing software, get an image of Scott's actual email from Gmail, which anyone can do, and then insert it over the fake email. Render the finished project, and then on your phone record your monitor playing it all back. If you did this in the frame rate that your monitor normally runs at, at the resolution it normally runs at, it should be pretty much seamless to what the original version was. You might be wondering, oh, but there should be a recording icon at the bottom of the screen for something like Streamlabs or OBS. Except for the fact that Windows 10 has a special feature when it comes to the taskbar. You can toggle it so that active icons only display on the monitor where the thing is being used. So if I have a Streamlabs window open, the icon would only appear on the second monitor. It would look like I didn't even have Streamlabs installed on the primary monitor. And since I wouldn't have Streamlabs open on the playback on my phone, it would look like it was never running at all. You could even further make this untraceable by having a capture card and just recording it on a laptop or secondary device. However, that's going a little bit far, but it could still get the same end result. And that is basically it for what Entom would need to do to fake this. Now, I did go to extra lengths to make this as seamless as possible. When I got the screen capture of Scott's email, I did so in the virtual machine so it would line up even better when pasted in. Entom's version also doesn't have the dates shown in the actual email chain at all. It only shows the date in the inbox. To make it authentic to Entom's version, I edited out the dates. I also edited the date to line up. I just found an email I had from that day and pasted it over. However, since the Talbert Files discussion has been going on for quite a while, especially in Tom's personal circles, I wouldn't be surprised if the original email was just genuinely made on that day, at which point you wouldn't even need to fake or do anything with the date. Speaking of why the dates would be missing in the core email, this could just be caused by virtual machine shenanigans. Firefox is not built on Chromium, and a lot of Google apps and applications do not work very well off software that does not run on Chromium which could create some of the oddities. Another small oddity that could be caused by this is this weird link profile thing. I don't know what this is. I don't even know what this feature is. It wouldn't stop anyone from making the fake edit at all. You could still very easily just paste the email over the original one. I just genuinely don't know what this feature is. I also removed any audio, as Entom's video did not have any audio itself. It does have voiceover, 
but there are no keystrokes, there are no mouse clicks, there are no bird noises that are prevalent throughout the rest of the video, and there is no general sound atmosphere that would be there even if Anton wasn't talking. By the way, if you know anything about the speedrunning community, you should know that no audio is a huge red flag for something like this. That could have been the easiest way to tell this was all really happening in real time and not just a pre-recorded edit that's playing back on the monitor. Also, Entom's mouse just goes around the box rather than going directly through it or highlighting anything. Highlighting the email this way would be virtually impossible for the method I'm talking about, or at least would require proving Entom has a level of editing which we don't know for a fact he has. Which, by the way, is a crucial point of all of this. I had to do all of this within the confines of what I believed Anton was capable of. Luckily for us, we have an entire video to pick apart for what Anton might be capable of. Anton has a second monitor, we can see this a few times. Anton's editing software is capable of creating visuals and there is no watermark visible so we wouldn't see this on the playback if it was all edited beforehand. And there is free image editing software such as GIMP to make the fake email in the first place. OBS and Dreamlabs are both free screen capture software. And if you're able to make text and black box overlays in a video, I would have no reason to believe you couldn't overlay a simple image. Or at least I don't know of an editing software that would have that restriction where you couldn't insert images over previous ones, but could add in text or black boxes. And by the way, that is all assuming Entom had to do this alone. For this process, all Entom would theoretically need to do, record looking at the fake email, send it to someone else who has better editing experience or knowledge, they could edit it, send it back, and then Entom can just play it back on the monitor on their phone. You could also probably put together how you could prove it's real by breaking this method. Show stuff like highlighting the text. Also doing a screen recording directly off the monitor would mean we would have a higher quality version of this all to compare against. There's a lot of room for imperfections that could have been created in editing to be hidden. Potentially showing the download of the ISO for the virtual machine could also help. Like I said, I don't think it was fake through the virtual machine at all, but showing that this is an unaltered original ISO could also further establish things. But given that Entom's version of Firefox did have some weird anomalies, having everything exactly as it was so we could recreate it ourselves could help maybe look for differences or oddities. And I cannot stress enough that having sound or even just like panning down and showing key presses actually making letters and things on the screen would help so much imply and clarify this is all actually happening. Like showing you maybe like picking up the mouse and clicking the screen, which would show the video player if it was in a video player, would just help really establish this is happening. This is in real time. If you can do even half of those things, you can make something way more convincing. I shouldn't have to say this, but do not harass Entom or anyone in that fan group or anyone associated with the Talbert files, please. With that said, bye.